this is Patrick at 1CNC West and what we're going to do in this training video is start to apply toolpath to our part. Now the first thing we need to do is to create a stock boundary. I'm going to hit the spacebar twice to go to a CAD view. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit and let's just create a simple rectangle for this. So we're going to head over to the command manager, select the line tool and from there we'll select rectangle. Now you can use coordinates if you'd like. But to speed things up, I'm just going to grid point snap. I'm just going to left click, pull my cursor down to the lower right, right about there. I think that looks good. And then I'll just simply left click. Now, when using one CNC mill professional, there's really two types of stock. There's the type of stock that helps contain toolpath. And that's what we have right here. We created a wireframe boundary for that. And the other type of stock can be a solid model to assist when simulating toolpath. Let's do that. Let's extrude that wireframe rectangle we created and let's create some stock. Now it's important to note that you do need a layer called stock for that geometry to reside. So I'm going to take my cursor down to the lower right and within the layer browser we're going to create a brand new layer. Now if you don't see the layer browser just click on the layers tab and then from here we can create a layer just by right clicking and select add layer. Now that the layer has been created, let's rename it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on that. And once we double click, we can rename it stock using uppercase letters. All right, that looks good. So let's click OK to that and create our solid model. We're going to head back to the command manager and select the extrude tools. From here, we're going to select extrude curves. Once we do that, we can take our cursor and just left click anywhere on the boundary and then when we're done selecting we can right click. At this point you can move your cursor up or down to specify the thickness of the solid or you can take your cursor and snap any point at the bottom of the solid model and that way the brand new stock will have exactly the same thickness. In this example I want to type in a height so I'm going to move my cursor over to the left within the command manager and where it says height I'm going to type in minus one inch. From here, I'm just going to take my cursor into the graphics area and simply left hand mouse click. All right, that looks great. There is our solid model we created for the stock and it's placed on the layer called stock. Now let's create our very first toolpath. To do this, we're going to head back over to the command manager and we're going to select model toolpaths. Now let's take a quick moment and talk a little bit about these types of toolpaths. Model toolpaths recognize solids and surfaces. And a lot of times these types of toolpath are called three axis toolpaths. You'll also notice that we have a group of toolpaths called stock toolpaths. These types of toolpaths recognize wireframe geometry. And these types of toolpaths are often called two and a half axis toolpaths. But because we have a solid model, we're going to be using the three axis Z-level rough machining operation. I'll select that and within the very first dialog box, this is where we define our tool. Now there's two ways to do this. We can define a tool manually or we can select a tool from the tool library. In this example, let's create a tool manually. I'm going to move the cursor over to the right and for the turret position, I'm going to type in one. For the spindle speed or RPM, I'm going to use 4200. Now notice how there's two types of feed rates. There's a feed rate and a plunge rate. The feed rate is the feed rate that gets applied anytime the tool feeds along the X and Y axis. The plunge rate is the feed rate that gets applied anytime the tool feeds along the Z axis. For feed rate, I'm going to type in 25 for 25 inches a minute. Notice how one CNC takes that amount and divides it by two and gives us a suggested plunge rate. You can always overwrite this. In fact, I'm going to type in 10 for that. And later on, I'll show you how you can change the formula so that the plunge rate gets calculated any way that you'd like. Let's move down to tool holder. I'm going to left click. And for this, I'm going to be using a half inch side lock. Let's click OK to that. Now let's define the type of tool we're going to use. We're going to be using an end mill. So I'm going to select end for that. And now let's specify the overall length. That's simply just how far the tool sticks out past the end of the holder. I'm going to type in 1.5 and notice how the graphics automatically update. 
Now the flute link designates the length of the flute. For that, let's type in 1 inch 250 thousandths. That's represented by the gold there. And for diameter, I'm going to be using a 5 inch diameter. So I'm going to type in 0.625. I think that looks good, so let's click next on that. Now this next dialog box allows us to set our clearances and depths. I want you to think of the rapid Z plane as the safety plane. This is the Z level the tool is going to use if it has to reposition itself from one location to another. You can think of this again as the safety plane. That's represented by this red grid. Right now it's set to 200 thousandths, but watch what happens when I set that to 1. You'll see the grid dynamically move up to 1 inch above the part. Let's put that back to 0.2. Now the plunge clearance, that's where the feed rate's going to start. That's where the tool's going to start feeding down. I think 50 thousandths is fine, and that's represented by the white grid. I think all this looks very good, so let's click next on that. Now within Mill Professional, you have three different machining styles. You have high speed closed, high speed open, and traditional. You can see traditional is more of a concentric type of toolpath. For this, let's use high speed open. Very good. Let's click next on that. Now for approach style, we have three options. We have plunge, ramp helix, and ramp zigzag. For this, I'm going to be using the plunge approach because we're going to be plunging outside of the part for each depth of cut. Very good. Let's click next on that. Now we have the step over parameter. This is the amount that the tool is going to move over for each pass. By default, this uses a percent of the tool diameter. And right now we have 75%. Notice underneath there, 1CNC provides the decimal equivalent, 0.46875. If you don't want to use a percentage, you can always uncheck this and type in whatever value you want. For example, how about 450 thousandths? So you always have the ability to use a decimal step over or a percentage. I'm going to put this back to 75%. Now we have depth of cut. For this, I'm going to use... 150 thousandths. That looks good and I'm going to leave 20 thousandths on the side because this is just a roughing operation. I'll use the default tolerance of 2 tenths and let's click next on that. Now on this last dialog box, the first thing we need to do is decide what type of boundary do we want to use. Do we want to use extents box or do we want to use picked? For this, we want to use picked because we want to pick that rectangle we created earlier to help contain the toolpath. Now let's take a look at the tool placement position. There's three options. There's outside boundary, none, and inside boundary. Now outside boundary means the tool can go outside of the boundary, but only as far until the tool becomes tangent to the boundary. None means that the tool can also go outside the boundary, but only until the center line of tool reaches the boundary. And inside boundary means the tool has to stay inside the boundary and again until the tool becomes tangent to the boundary. For this, I'm going to select none. Now here we can define the range of motion along the Z axis. You can think of this as the Z envelope to contain the toolpath. Now there's two ways to use this. The first option is to use the automatic Z. Here's what happens. For example, if we have 50 thousands here, one CNC scans the solid model and it adds 50 thousands to the top and 50 thousandths to the bottom, and that becomes the range of toolpath along the z-axis. If you don't want to do that, you can uncheck this, and you can manually type in whatever you'd like. For this example, I might say I want the range to be confined to z0, and the bottom at minus 870 thousandths. So this gives you the flexibility to contain the toolpath along the z-axis any way that you'd like. I'm going to use those parameters, you click finish, and now when CNC wants us to select our boundary, all we have to do is left hand mouse click anywhere on that wireframe geometry and then right hand mouse click to let one CNC generate the toolpath. And there we go. There is our very first machining operation. And if you look over within the NC manager, you can see it listed right at the very top. Now let's take a look at performing a profile operation around the exterior of the part. For this, we're going to be using stock toolpaths. Now, we talked about these a little bit earlier in that these machining operations require wireframe geometry. 
Let's quickly create some wireframe geometry at the bottom of the part that we can use to profile. So what I'm going to do first is select the layer that contains the solid model. Let's head back over to the command manager, go into our model tools, and let's use this option called extract surface edges. All we have to do is take our cursor, hover over the face, and left click, and then when we're done we can right hand mouse click. And now one CNC has created wireframe geometry right at the base of the solid model. In fact, let's temporarily hide the solid model. I'm going to hit the letter S on the keyboard, left click. Now I'll hit the letter B on the keyboard, which is just like using this option up here, the blank option. I'll hit the letter B on the keyboard, and now you can see there's our wireframe geometry. Now, I don't want the tool to go inside here, so we're going to perform a quick geometry adjustment. I'm going to hit the letter S on the keyboard and select that line, and then hit the delete key. Now we can quickly go into the trim command by hitting the letter T on the keyboard, and what I want to do is I want to trim that line to the very end of that arc. Very good. Let's bring our solid model back. I'm going to rotate the view around. And there we go. We've got the geometry now we can use to perform the profiling operation. So back into the command manager, we're going to go into our stock tool pass. And for this, we can just use a simple mill profile basic command. I'm going to select that, take my cursor, left click where I want to start profiling. Now the arrows are used to determine the side and direction of cut. I want to cut on the outside and I want to climb cut, so I want to select this arrow with the left click. Now my cursor changes to the word end, and that's to remind us that one CNC wants us to select the very end of the geometry that we want to profile. Well, if we're going to climb cut all the way around, I really want to click that arc right there as the end. But I want to show you a shortcut. You can simply hit the F3 key on the keyboard and that will select all of the geometry. All right, with the geometry selected, let's right hand mouse click. And just like with our previous machining operation, the very first dialog box is where we define a tool. Now, last time we defined a tool manually. Now let's take a look at selecting a tool from the tool library. To get to the tool library, there's two options. You can select tool changer, or you can simply left click the tool graphic. I'm gonna left click the tool graphic, and here is the tool changer dialog box. Now the first tab says recent. This shows you recent tools that were used, and of course you can select one of those if you want, but I want to get into the library, so I'm going to click the library tab, and notice how all the tools are categorized into different groups. We want to select the end mill group, and from here we can select a tool. I think for this, I'm going to be using a three quarter inch high speed end mill. So I'm going to left click that, and when I'm done with that, I can click OK. Now notice when we do that, our speeds and feeds started flashing. That's because whenever you select a tool from the tool library, one CNC automatically calculates the speeds and feeds. And the way that's possible is if we quickly go back in the library, you'll notice that within the library, we have flutes and chip load. All right, I'm gonna cancel out of that. Now, you can always overwrite these values if you want to. So for example, I could round that down to 2000 for the RPM. And if I wanted to change a feed rate, I could certainly do that as well. Now for the tool position, this is gonna be in turret position number two. All the rest of the parameters look fine, so I'm just gonna click next on that. Now we set our clearances and depths, and these are all dynamically represented by these grids here. The rapid Z plane, that's our Z clearance or Z safety plane. That's the Z level the tool is gonna to use if it has to position from one location to another. I have that set at 200,000, that's fine. But remember, this is dynamic. Again, if we typed in one inch for that, you're gonna see that red grid hop up there to one inch. Let's put that at half of an inch. Our plunge clearance is where the tool is gonna to start to feed down. That's designated by those little black corners. If I put in a different value, let's say 200 thousandths, those black corners will hop up there. So let's put that back to 50 thousandths. That looks good. Material top, that's gonna to be Z0. And that's represented by that light gray or white grid. And then for final Z depth, that's gonna be the depth of the profile operation. Now I've forgotten how deep we wanna profile, so I'm gonna use this option called pick Z. That's gonna hide the menu. And now I can take my cursor and I can digitize any point at the bottom of the solid model and one CNC will extrapolate that Z level and push it right into the final Z depth parameter. Very good. And of course you can overwrite that 
If we want the tool to go a little bit deeper, let's erase that and just type in a nine. And now we're going to be profiling at Z minus 890 thousands. Great. So let's click next on that. So here's our approach style. We can cut the part using cut levels or we can perform a ramp profile. For this example, let's just stick with cut levels. We're going to click next on that. Don't need to worry about the step over here. And I don't need to worry about rough depths because I want to take this at one depth of cut. So we can leave these two parameters alone. Finish leave on sides. I'm going to have that set to zero because this is a finish pass. And we don't have to worry about the wall taper because there is no taper. The walls are straight up and down. Let's click next on that. All right, now for the finish settings, this gives you the ability to perform an extra finish pass. Let me explain. If we were to hop back one menu, if I had put in here, let's say 20 thousandths, what that means is that if we come over here, we can perform an extra finish pass, let's say at the very bottom of the part, and this finish pass would come back and remove that 20 thousandths. In this example, I don't want to do that. I just want to make one finish pass. So I'm going to have that set to zero. When we click next, for here, for finishing, I'm going to say none. I don't want to make that extra finish pass. Let's click next on that. And here's how we can control the lead in and lead out. For this profile operation, I want to arc the tool in, go all the way around the part, and then arc off. So for lead in style, I want to change that to line arc. Down here, we have the ability to fill out the parameters for that. I'm going to use a 200 thousandths radius arc. And for the lead in angle, I don't really need 90 degrees. I'll just use 45 degrees for that. I don't need this extra start line length. So let's just zero that out. And we also don't need the start line angle. So we'll leave that at zero. Now, if I want to populate my exit values to match the entry values, a shortcut is just to click this little Chevron button. When you left click it, it automatically populates the exit values to match the entry values. Hey, I think that looks great. So let's click finish and let one CNC generate the tool path. All right, that's it for this video. We started off by creating two types of stock and then we performed a three axis model machining operation and then a two and a half axis stock machining operation. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.